So when students come to me asking for a lesson in music theory, I find that it's seldom music theory that they're actually looking for. Instead, what they want is some step-by-step -step guidance as to how to approach crafting a musical idea from the ground up. So in this tutorial, that's what we're going to be doing. We aren't really going to be talking about music theory per se, but I am going to be walking you through this step-by-step -step decision making process so that you can begin making music in Ableton, whether you understand music theory or not. That being said, we will touch on some music theory concepts, but it will by no means be complete, and it's not the main goal of this tutorial. Uh, I highly recommend getting a quick crash course on music theory after watching this. Um, I'll link Andrew Wong's video below because it's very short and concise, but also covers a lot of ground as far as music theory goes. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to assume little to no music theory knowledge at all. Throughout this tutorial, we're going to be building a broad musical blueprint on top of which we can craft a complete track. This isn't going to be you know, a complete song, but it is going to give you a framework on top of which you can build. It will contain melody, chords, a bass line, and drums. It may feel a little paint by numbers at first, uh, but remember that we're not actually crafting a complete track. Plus, I've given you some wiggle room to create your own interpretations of everything along the way so that you can really make this your own. Plus, afterwards, you can get into sound design, mixing, and arranging, and all the stuff that really makes up a complete track. But for now, we're going to focus on these four elements. One last thing I want you to keep in mind before we get started is the acronym KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. It stands for Keep It Simple, Stupid. Uh, it can be easy when you're first starting out to assume that more complexity makes for better music, but that's very seldom the case. Uh, Well-informed, simple choices will take you much further than uninformed complexity. Now let's begin prepping our set so we can begin crafting this musical blueprint. So the first thing we're going to do is set our tempo to somewhere between 70 and 160 beats per minute. Uh, you know, most electronic music genres and subgenres have like very specific BPM ranges within which they lie. Uh, so if you know what genre you're going for, go ahead and set your tempo accordingly. I am going to set mine to, let's say, let's say 160. We'll go for like a drum and bass thing right now. So you want to create four MIDI tracks, one labeled melody, one labeled chords, one labeled bass, and one labeled drums. And you want to select instruments uh, that are appropriate for each of those kind of musical ideas. Right, so for this melody I have some stock synth preset um, that comes with Ableton. Uh, for my chords I have, you know, a nice piano. Uh, for my bass I have a nice bass guitar. Uh, and then on your drums uh, you want to drop uh, a drum rack in, uh, give yourself a nice kick, uh, a clap or a snare, uh, and then like three other miscellaneous percussion elements. And uh, don't forget that all of these sounds can be replaced later. Uh, we're not really focusing on sound selection right now, we're focusing on crafting the kind of musical composition of everything. So we want to make a nice uh, eight bar MIDI clip for each of our tracks. Do that just by selecting a section, hitting Control shift m and it'll create a MIDI clip. And it'll also correspond to the color of each of your tracks keep everything nice and organized. So let's start with our beat. I said I'm going to do a drum and bass thing. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to duplicate that across. We want it to have some semblance of repetition with some interplay between the kick and the snare, because that's what really helps drive our groove, right? If we just have kicks and snares happening haphazardly, uh, it doesn't really drive us the same way a repetitive pattern does. So this is what our pattern sounds like. Next, let's add some percussion elements on top of this. We want our percussion elements to uh, kind of contrast our kick and our snare pattern. So maybe I'll do something like this. And then I can duplicate that across. You know, I like to put uh, hi-hat hits in moments where there aren't either a kick or a snare. And then I'll duplicate that across. Now that we have our beat, it's time to move on to our scale. And uh, the first question we should ask ourselves when it comes to our scale is, what is the root of our scale? This is going to be the note that everything else re revolves around, and it's going to feel like our, our home base, right? When, when everything's on this note, everything feels rested. So, 
uh, we're going to decide using our bass instrument. Uh, so I'm going to record arm my bass instrument, and I'm going to play across my keyboard in the proper register. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to play on my bass instrument and find a nice, uh, a nice key center. You notice if I go too high, like up here, for example, this is a bit high for us. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really have that oomph uh, that like something like this does. But if we go too low, it's almost like we can barely hear it, right? So I find that um, uh, E, F, F sharp, those are good solid choices. So I'm going to go with E for now. Now that we've selected our root note, uh, I'm going to go into my chords uh, MIDI clip here, and I'm just going to fill in all of these white notes. I'm going to turn this off so we can't hear it. I'm just going to fill in all of these white notes between C and B, and I'll extend them out a little bit. Once I have all these notes filled in, I'm going to extend my C out, and I'm going to uh, shorten my A. The C is the root of our major scale, and the A is the root of our minor scale. That's a little bit of music theory terminology, uh, but the short explanation of what major scales and minor scales are, major scales sound really bright and happy and sunshine, uh, and minor scales are a bit more subdued, uh, gloomy, sad, however you want to think about it, right? That's a kind of short explanation, uh, but it'll serve for our purposes. Also, I should mention that there are other scales besides major and minor. In fact, scales and modes are a big subject of interest for me, so if that is something you want me to go more in depth on in a different video, please let me know in the comments below, uh, and we can see if we can make that happen. So, now we want to decide is our song in major or minor? I'm going to go with minor, because lots of drum and bass happens to be in minor. Uh, so I'm going to select all of my notes, and using the arrow keys up and down, I am going to uh, move these notes until my A, my short note here, this A, uh, is on an E. So, you know, I want it down here. Okay. And now I am going to... Select all of this, Control-D to duplicate, uh, Shift and up arrow key, that'll uh, take us up an octave. And I'm going to do this up and down until we have a nice broad range of MIDI notes. So now that we've uh, duplicated this across every octave, every register, uh, I'm going to select all by hitting Control and A. It'll select all my MIDI notes, and I'm going to use the left arrow key to just nudge everything off of the grid here. Here's where the magic happens. When I click this Fold button, everything collapses to this key. Uh, so now everything I play is going to be in E minor. We selected our minor key, and we selected our root note as E, so everything's going to be in E minor. And we're going to do this for uh, every element of our track, so the melody, the bass, uh, and the chords are all going to have uh, these MIDI notes in them, folded like this, so everything's fixed to one key. We can do that by hitting Control A, selecting all the MIDI notes, just like we did before, and then hitting Control C to copy all those MIDI notes, go into our uh, next track, and hitting Control V, and then nudging them off of the clip, just like we did before, and hit Fold. Same thing with our bass track, nudge it off of the clip, and hit Fold. Okay, now we have selected our scale and our key, uh, and now we can get started with actually making some music. We're going to start with our chords, and remember I had my... Ooh, that's too low. Had my nice piano that we're going to work with. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is find our root note, which is E. So I'm going to find an E here. That's a bit high. Find a nice mid-range E. So again, I'm transposing by octaves by hitting shift and the up and down arrow keys. That seems like a good mid-range. You know, down here would be too low. But up here might be a bit too high. So this seems like a good place. So we have our root note here. And now I'm going to draw another note uh, just two scale degrees above this note. So uh, each of these notes we refer to as a scale degree, a, a note in the scale. So... I'm going to just skip this note and draw a note right here. And then I'm going to do that again. And now we have a chord. 
Nice. Uh, you can go ahead and add another one, too, if you're feeling spicy. Again, uh, two scale degrees above the uh, previous note. It's a bit more colorful. If you don't like it, go ahead and delete it. You can stick with uh, simple three note chords. That'll work just fine. Now we're going to change the length of our chord. So doing something like one bar, you know, between one and two here is a nice safe choice. That's how most chord progressions go. Uh, you know, you'll hit a chord and it'll go ba, two, three, four, ba, two, three, four, ba, two. Um, I'm going to try something a little bit more adventurous. I am going to make it, you know, three and a half, or uh, yeah, three and a half beats long. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can get a good, nice clear view of it. And now I'm going to duplicate this chord by selecting all these notes, hitting Control D. And now uh, we want to just select a number between two and seven. Uh, and uh, whichever note we pick, we're going to place this bottom note on that scale degree. So, you know, if this is one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Uh, so I'm going to pick four. It's going to go up like that. Now I'm going to hit control D again. Uh, and I'm going to go up to, actually I'll go down to two maybe. So it'll go one, four, two, and then I'll do, um, how about, how about three? That seems fine. Uh, actually, let's go back up to four. So it'll go one, four, two, four. And uh, I'm actually going to take this last chord and extend it out like this so it reaches my, uh, uh, the end of my bar here, because we have, the, or the end of my four bar phrase here. So, you know, we have one, two, three, four bars. Most musical ideas encompass about four bars, maybe eight bars, 16 bars, uh, some power of two. And then I'm going to take all of this and duplicate it. Uh, so this chord progression isn't done, but we're going to leave it be for now because we're going to use the information in this chord progression to craft our other musical ideas, and then we'll come back to the chord progression uh, to spice it up a little bit more and add more nuance. So now we're going to write our bass line. And uh, just like we did before, we're going to find our nice root note. So, so that's a nice E. And you can see that sounds really nice under that first chord, you know, if I play these two together. Seems like they're working together, right? Um, I'm actually going to mute my chords for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a one note bass line uh, using uh, just rhythm to kind of explore uh, what I want to do here. And uh, just like our drums, this rhythm should be repetitive in nature. Uh, you don't want it to just kind of be haphazard rhythms because re repetition is how we uh, feel that groove. Uh, we also want it to kind of be informed by our uh, by our drums. I had a, a music teacher in high school tell me that the bass should be married to the kick drum, and I always took that to heart because uh, when the bass and the drums work together, it really helps propel that groove, and that's what we want when we're making dance music, right? Um, so I'll try. I'll like solo just you know my my bass and my drums maybe something like this like boo boo and remember we're keeping it simple stupid that almost sounds nice on its own uh once i've uh completed four bars you know between one and five here i'm gonna take everything and duplicate it across. Now we're going to come back to our chords. I unmuted it. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to investigate what chords are playing at any moment that um, a bass note is hitting. What we want to do is we want the bass notes to hit either this uh, root note here or this, uh, uh, I guess, third from the bottom note, which uh, in music theory terminology we describe as the root and the fifth, because it's the fifth scale degree up. One, two, three, four, five. That's our fifth. Uh, so our first note I'm going to keep as a as my root. I'll actually do this so we can see both, where I select both of these clips. I can see my chord and my, my chords and my bass line at the same time. So here I have an, uh, two E's. That's solid. Uh, here we have an A, a C, and an E. I also have an E here, so I'm going to keep that there. Uh, here we have an F sharp 
an A and a C. So I think I want to, you know, this is a bit monotonous, so I want to do a bit of a leap. I want to go up to an A here, uh, and then maybe another A, and then uh, this chord also has an A in it, so I'll stay up here in an A, and then we're getting, you know, uh, we're getting a little monotonous here, so I'll drop down to an F sharp. Uh, and then we also have an E here, so we have a nice E right here as well. And then I'm just going to duplicate all this again, and here I'm going to add a little bit of variation. This second note on this section is going to go up to a C. Uh, so now with everything together, let's see how this sounds. I'll turn my chords down a little bit. we go. Uh, some other notes I want to make about your note selection as far as the relationship between bass and chords go. Uh, the root and the fifth will sound nice and safe, but we don't want to do only roots and fifths because we want some variety in there, right? Uh, if I were to do, uh, you know, this note, the G, uh, it might sound okay, but it might sound a little unstable. So like... You can see it, it feels like it feels like it wants to go somewhere a little bit uh, so roots and fifths sound really uh, stable uh, thirds as we describe them because they're third scale degree one two three sound uh, you know give a bit more color to everything which you might want and you might not want uh, also you might notice that this F sharp this F sharp isn't even in the the chord that is currently playing, but it kind of acts as a bridge between this A and this E, uh, which I like. Uh, if you're going to use a note that isn't in the chord, I suggest using it as what we call a passing tone, uh, which is from one, uh, one note in the chord to the other. And I feel like in this uh, circumstance, it's really effective. We're going to construct our melody in kind of a similar way as our bass line. I'm going to select my chords and my melody clip at the same time so I can see them both. We're going to find a nice E, a nice high one, and we're going to do another one note melody, but uh, this time we want to do something that kind of contrasts the other elements rather than uh, complements them. The bass and the drums, they work together. We are in fact making drum and bass. Haha. -ha. Um, I didn't plan that joke, that just happened to, happened to be a thing. Um, but. I am going to write a one note bass line on top of the rest of our track here. So now that we have our one note melody, I am going to select my melody clip and my chords clip so I can see them both at the same time. Actually notice that my E is quite high. I'm going to select all of them and transpose them down an octave. Uh, if you want in that high, that by all means, I, I think that better suits our purposes right now. So just with our bass line, we're going to investigate what melody notes we're playing uh, at any given time another chord is sounding. So on this first chord, we have an E, a G, and a B, and I have an E. That's a safe choice, but remember that we also have an E playing in the bass, and we want these elements to contrast a little bit. So I think I'm going to take this E up to a B. I'm actually, I'll mute this for now, uh, just so you don't hear everything. And... Uh, uh, with the melody, I think you have a bit more um, uh, freedom with your note choice. You know, you I think you can get away more with uh, playing notes that aren't in the chord than you can with the bass, because the bass kind of is our foundation, right? Uh, so if, if the bass is off, then the whole thing sounds off. But if our melody's off, then it just kind of sounds like the melody's off. And maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, a nice walk down from B to G here, and then uh, then I'll, I'll re-articulate that, uh, that G. And here we got uh, an A, a C, and an E. I'll keep the E there, and then I'll leap up to, uh, or I'll, I'll step up to this F sharp, and then I'll leap up to a C, an F sharp, an A, and a C. So I think I'll do a C here. Here, I'll do, I'll see if I can get away with doing something similar to what I did here. A, because we have an A right here. 
here, and then we'll walk down to an F sharp. Uh, and then here we have an E, so I'm just going to have it land on that E. And here I'll do a leap up to a B, uh, just like we did before. Actually, let's leap up to... Let's go up to like a high E, so we're like we're going up the octave. And then we'll go stepwise motion down. Actually, we'll do a C here, and then... I realize I'm still playing the bass on my keyboard. And then I'll just duplicate all of this. I don't quite know how this is going to sound yet. You know, I haven't been playing it back, so let's uh, let's listen to it. Um, I'm mildly satisfied with that. There's, you know, if, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, I'd, I'd tweak that quite a bit, but I think it'll suit our purposes for now. Okay, so we have uh, our bass, our chords, and our melody, but let's go back to our chords, because I remember we said we were going to uh, add some subtlety there. So one thing we want to aim for with our chords, you know, this isn't gospel, but uh, one thing we want to aim for with our chords is having each note in each chord lead into the next in uh, stepwise motion, so going from one scale degree to the, the neighboring scale degree. And there are some moments here where that doesn't quite happen, you know. Uh, we got, like, a big leap here. Uh, like, this note seems to just kind of be its own island. Uh, so we could do some work here. And this is actually very easy to, to fix. Uh, you know, I noticed that this E is all by itself. If I hit shift and down arrow key, it goes right to this E here. So now we have, you know, this G leading into this A, this B leading into this C, and this E, you know, stays where it is. And then that leads right into this F sharp. This is a lot easier than uh, than you might anticipate at first. Again, I'm going to take this E, transpose it down, and look at that. There we go. Now we have a bit more of a subtle voicing. Uh, we call this practice voice leading because each voice in the chord leads into the next. So let's uh, take a listen to it now. You know, sounds a bit more interesting. Now this is our opportunity to get a bit more adventurous with the articulation of the chord. Um, uh, you know, I could take this and play a bit more of a different rhythm, where I'm doing something like this, maybe, where I have this, like, repeat, uh, repeating, uh, articulation of each chord. You know, this is just an example. Uh, I'm not necessarily gonna stick with this. Uh, you know, I don't think that's what I want to go for, but that's an option you have. Uh, another option you have is to grab an arpeggiator, which you can find in your MIDI effects. If I drop that onto the track. So now we got something like this. You know, that's a whole lot more interesting than just having static chords. Uh, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of other things you can do. Uh, something I like to do a lot uh, is just kind of write a new melody altogether that implies these uh, these different chord changes. Uh, so, you know, uh, in like the first few notes of my melody, I would include an E, a G, and a B, uh, and like really emphasize those notes. And then in the next part, I would do the same with the next chord and the next chord. So that way you kind of have this track that doesn't have strict chords in them, but you have this implication of a chord progression, which I think can sound really, really great, and that's something I have all over my tracks. So again, this isn't a complete track, but uh, let's listen to what we have. And now you can take all these elements, arrange them however you want. You can replace the sounds that each uh, each element is uh, being played with. Uh, you can change out your specific drum elements. You can add effects. You can do all sorts of wild sound design. And, you know, the world is really your oyster at this point. So the last thing I want to mention is my Patreon. I release uh, sample packs once every two to three weeks. 
uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, I released a pack of snares, and I'm just about to release a pack of guitar uh, loops that are just begging to be chopped up and reversed and processed in any way you can imagine. Uh, and all of those are available for $1 a month, so if you got a dollar to spare, you can get access to everything I've ever released, which I think is about 10 packs now. And all of it goes towards uh, gender-affirming procedures uh, for me. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm transgender, and uh, my first Patreon goal is to pay for my electrolysis to remove my facial hair, all through Patreon. So if that is something you want to support, or if you just want the sample packs, um, go to patreon.com slash June underscore Bernie. Bernie is spelled B-I-R-N-I-E. Uh, and with that, I bid you a good day.